Hey guys, I'm your host, Deva, and today we'll be jumping right into chemical reactions, lesson one of chemistry essentials. Since this is our first video on chemistry, I expect you to have minimal knowledge like what is an atom and what are molecules and valence electrons. You should have heard about ionic and covalent bonds, and if you don't, then you should probably come back to this video once you're caught up. Right now, we're going to talk about something cooler than atoms and molecules. We're going to talk about how two or more molecules will come together and react to form more molecules. And that, my friends, is a preview of chemical reactions. Okay, so on our left, we have a picture of the types of chemical reactions. So what do we have here? We have synthesis, some decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. All right. So how do we formally define chemical reactions? Well, let's just say that chemical reactions are processes of which substances undergo chemical changes to become new substances. Okay, did you get that down in your notes? Here, we're going to be talking about our five main types of chemical reactions. Okay, so we already talked about it. Synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. And trust me, they're not as scary as they sound, so sit back and relax. Actually, don't. You need to pay attention now. We write chemical equations to express chemical reactions. Basically, they tell us what's going on in the chemical reaction. So, as you can see in this picture here, we have some sodium atoms and they're colliding with some chlorine molecules to create NaCl, sodium chloride or table salt. Now typically, chemical equations should be balanced, the one you see here is not. So we will need to add a 2 to the NaCl and a 2 to the Na, the sodium, so that the number of each atoms of an element are equal. So you see, the number of sodium atoms are equal and the number of sodium chloride atoms are equal too. Anyways, we'll save balancing for our next lesson. It's too much to include in one video, not to mention twice the views. So, there's typically two sides to our chemical equation. The left side of the arrow represents the reactants, which are Na and Cl2, sodium and chloride ions. And the right side represents the products, which is NaCl, table salt, or you may call it sodium chloride in its IUPAC name. By the way, IUPAC stands for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists, which basically define the normal standards of naming chemicals. Alright, and the arrow just represents the progression of the reaction. Alright, so on to single displacement reactions we go. These are a bit more complicated to understand. Here we typically have one element and one compound as the reactants, and another element and another compound as the product. So as you can see here in the picture, in the general equation for a single displacement reaction, element A reacts with compound BC, and then the products yielded are AC and B. So essentially, element A has displaced element B from the compound, and typically the element A is present as a metal, which displaces another metal, such as element B. Alright, so here are a few examples. We have zinc plus hydrochloric acid and that yields zinc chloride and hydrogen gas, H2, hydrogen gas. And then we have sodium plus water, H2O, and that will give us sodium hydroxide, NaOH, plus hydrogen gas. And then we have gold, Au, plus zinc sulfide, and that will give us no reaction. Oh, what do we have here? Why is there no reaction for this? Well, there's the complication I was talking about. Some metals are not electrostatically attractive enough to displace the element off of the compound. Thus, there is no reaction. So, to verify if a reaction will occur, we basically need to check whether or not the reactant can actually do the displacement. And to do that, we have to refer to a metal activity series as shown here. So, the metal activity series shows gold or Au at the bottom of our list, which means that it's the least, least reactive of all and does not have the ability to displace the zinc metal. Therefore, there is no reaction because the zinc metal is more reactive than the gold, so it cannot let go of the sulfide ion. 
Therefore, there is no reaction and we must always remember to check this table whether the single displacement reaction can occur or not. Alright, now on to my personal favorite, double displacement reactions. Luckily, we don't have to refer to an activity series table this time because a double displacement reaction is where two reactants combine and basically swap ions to form new compounds. So as you can see here, the general equation shows that if we have two ionic compounds, AD and BC, they will basically swap ions where the anions, you can say C and D, will swap. So that will give us the yield of AC plus BD. Basically what's happening is that the C has switched with the D and the D has switched with the C. So that's why we have AC and BC. So if you're confused, here is a typical example. We have potassium iodide Ki plus sodium chloride NaCl and that will yield NaI or sodium iodide and potassium chloride. Simple, right? So another recognized double displacement reaction will be a neutralization where an acid and a base come together to completely neutralize each other into water and an ionic salt. So an ionic salt is basically an ionic compound, just so you know. So we have hydrochloric acid plus barium hydroxide and that will yield barium chloride and water. So as you can see, barium chloride is the ionic salt and water is the product. All right, we're almost done here. Our last one is combustion reactions. So as you may already know, combustion means the burning of substances or fire. And the above image shows that for combustion, you need three things, oxygen, fuel, and heat. Without any of those, you can't have combustion. Now, there's two types of combustion we're going to review, complete combustion and incomplete combustion. Complete combustion is where you have a lot of oxygen for the reaction. And this is quite rare. If this occurs, you will have a blue flame. Remember, a blue flame shows complete combustion. So the Bunsen burners you may use at school have a blue flame, which indicates complete combustion. On the other hand, incomplete combustion is not so rare. It happens in almost every fire you imagine. An orangey red color fire is produced. So how are complete and incomplete combustion different besides their flame color? Well, in complete combustion, the only products that are resulted are water and carbon dioxide. Let me just repeat that. In complete combustion, the only products that are resulted are water and carbon dioxide. Okay, so here's an example. A typical example will include methane gas CH4 plus two moles or two molecules of oxygen gas and that will yield two moles of water and one mole of carbon dioxide. Let's just say that mole means molecule right now. We don't need to worry about it. So, all right, we have some methane and oxygen gas on the reaction side and these combine with enough oxygen to form water and carbon dioxide. A typical combustion reaction, complete combustion reaction. Now, in incomplete combustion, we can have a lot more products for the same reactant. So again, let's start with two moles of methane gas not one, but two moles of methane gas, but only three molecules of oxygen gas. So its ratio is slightly set off. So two to three versus one to two in the previous complete combustion reaction. So we don't have enough oxygen and therefore we have carbon monoxide produced, CO. However, we can also produce some solid carbon as well. Therefore, if you see carbon monoxide or solid carbon, then it must be incomplete combustion. And one more thing to note down for complete combustion reactions, is that on the reactant side, there is always a hydrocarbon that can burn up to produce our products. What's a hydrocarbon? Well, it's just a molecule composed of carbon and hydrogen. Pretty easy to remember. Okay, that's all you need to know for now. But wait, before you leave, we got some practice problems for you. They'll challenge you. Nah, I'm just kidding. If you paid attention in this video, this concept should be pretty easy to understand. In our next video, we'll cover how to balance chemical equations and believe me, if you master that, you'll have a lot of fun. If you found this helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button. Until we meet again.